Three sources of strongholds. If you want to identify the hidden strongholds in your life, you need only survey the attitudes in your heart. Every area in your thinking that glistens with hope in God is an area which is being liberated by Christ. But any system of thinking that does not have hope, which feels hopeless, is a stronghold which must be pulled down. The first source of strongholds, the world. Generally speaking, strongholds originate from any one of three sources. The first is the very world in which we have been born. The steady stream of information and experience that continually shaped our childhood perceptions is the greatest source of strongholds within us. The amount of love or lack of love in our home, our cultural environment, peer values and pressures, as well as fears of rejection and exposure, even our physical appearance and intelligence all combine to form our sense of identity and our view of life. How many of today's adults accept that they are mentally slow simply because as children they absorbed the negative thoughtless scoldings of a teacher or parent into their self-concept. See, Another limitation is astrology. Christians know this false religion is a lie, yet multitudes of believers are still subconsciously bound to the characteristics and weaknesses of their zodiac sign. Sad, isn't it? This mixture of deceptive facts and illusions is absorbed into our identity where it stands in direct opposition to the work of God in transforming and saving our souls. You see, from birth there is a journey set before every man. It is the pilgrimage of the soul to find itself. Our souls wroth with insecurities, our highly sensitive, the our souls, listen, our souls wroth with insecurities are highly sensitive to the criticisms and compliments of others. In the search to find oneself, such words are poured into our young hearts like molten steel, which as they cool are fused into our natures. So many of our concepts and limitations are built into us from childhood, constructed into our thinking patterns through the words and ideas of others. Many of our ideas about life are ours only because we know of no other way. Yet we defend and protect our ideas, justifying our concepts as though they were born in the womb of our own creativity. The truth is that most of the ideas and values that motivate us as adults are simply systems of thought, of thought we received from our parents and from our environment. Before we defend the way we are, we need to look at the lives of those who taught us. Jesus said that we will be like our teachers, Luke 6.40. Are those who taught us so full of love and wisdom, so capable in adversity that we should emulate them? We are instructed to consider the outcome or the end of a man's way of life before we submit to what he says. Hebrews 13.7 only one person, the Lord Jesus Christ, proved by his resurrection that he knew the secrets of life. By conquering death, he plainly revealed he understood life, see. Although Jesus will use people to teach us, we must not become followers of mere men where those men are not indeed conformed to Christ. Our goal is to be conformed to Jesus Christ and Him only. Any teaching that does not support this singular goal must not be allowed to rule us. When we come to Christ, all that we are in nature and character is destined to change.
The Bible tells us God has provided for us a new heart, a new mind, and a new spirit, a new nature, and ultimately even a new name. Hebrews 8, 10, 1 Corinthians 2, 16, 2 Corinthians 5, 16, and 17, Revelations 2, 17. Remember, when you were born again, you were filled with the Spirit of God, and through His Spirit, you were birthed into another realm, the kingdom of heaven, see. Though your feet are still on earth through the vehicle of the Holy Spirit, your spirit is married to the actual person of Jesus Christ, who is seated at the throne of God. Even as your limbs are attached to your torso, so your heart is attached to the power of God. You are never alone. Christ is always with you. What you are or what you were as a person when you came to Jesus, you will never be again. God's promise is that if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature and old things passed away. The old things are passed away. Behold, new things have come. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Everything, even your intelligence and physical appearance, is now subject to change for the better. Old failures, prejudices, prejudices and attitudes are destined to go. New faith and hope should be growing within you daily. But the way you attain this new life is to surrender your old life to the spirit and words of Jesus. See? The stronghold of our experiences. Another manner through which strongholds are built into us is through our experiences and the conclusions we have drawn from them. These experiences, for better or worse, are what we call reality. Let us realize that life as we perceive it is based upon whatever network of thoughts and opinions we are currently allowing to govern our souls. On the other hand, God defines reality as the truth found in his word. For us to travel from our world into the reality of God, we must view Jesus' words as doors through which we enter God's eternal kingdom. In the combined meaning of all Jesus taught, we find the living reality of the kingdom of God. Victory comes when we line ourselves up to the reality of God's life. To topple the stronghold of our experiences, we must let God be found true, though every man be found a liar. Romans 3, 4. The only one who has a right to shape our lives is Jesus Christ. We must determine to allow nothing and no one, not even our personal experiences, to shape us unless the outcome of those experiences is consistent with the promises of God. We must ask ourselves, who is ruling our lives, God or our human experiences? To the degree that our experiences do not conform to the word of God, they subconsciously teach us that God is not who he says he is. We must guard our hearts and the opinions we form about life. For unless the events of our lives are consummated in Christ's likeness, they are incomplete. In other words, even though you were not healed, you should not accept that healing is not for today. God's provision is an eternal provision, which means that until heaven and earth pass away, he has provided for our healing. He has provided for our healing. In regard to sin, though, you repeatedly stumble. You must continue to believe God for grace to overcome. You must give yourself room to grow into new insights. You must never surrender your faith to God's word. You must never surrender your faith in God's word. You must never surrender your faith faith in God's word. Experiences may seem valid, but if they have left you thinking that Jesus is not the same today as he was in the Gospels, the conclusion you must Listen, the conclusion you have drawn is a wrong conclusion. It is a stronghold that must be pulled down. A third source of strongholds comes from false church doctrines and 
teachings. Jesus warned, see to it that no one misleads you, Matthew 24, 4. We can be led by another person, but we must take responsibility that we are not misled by that individual. Listen, we must study and know the Bible ourselves. If we do not, how can we discern error in the teachings we hear? As much as we love a particular pastor, as often as we have been edified by him, we must humbly, humbly ask the Lord to confirm any questionable doctrines. No teacher is so true, no prophet so pure that we can blindly let them lead us. They may lead us, but our eyes must be open and our ears sensitive to the confirming voice of Jesus. As it is written, let every word be confirmed by the mouth of two or three witnesses. 2 Corinthians 13.1 even true teachers can innocently communicate false doctrines. It does not matter how sincere our Bible teacher is. If what we are being taught does not lead us into Christ's love, his holiness, or his power, if we are not being prepared in these spiritual dimensions for Jesus and through him for others, that, doc that doctrine is a stronghold which is limiting and oppressing us. If these things aren't happening, if we are being taught, listen, if we are being taught what we're being taught does not lead us into Christ's love, his holiness, or his power, if we are not being prepared in these spiritual dimensions for Jesus and through him for others, that doctrine that we're being taught is a stronghold which is limiting and oppressing us that needs to be pulled down. The safest way to ensure that no one misleads us is to see to it we do not mislead ourselves. We must stay honest with God and sensitive to his love and his word. Satan's plan is to make us somehow accept either through our uh, Bringing, through our upbringing, our experiences, or through church dogma, that certain portions of the life of Christ are untrue or not valid in our case. Every battle we face in life is over the word and whether or not we can build our lives upon the faithfulness and integrity of God. Listen, if we hold fast to those things of which we are sure God will be faithful to deliver us from every stronghold and lead us fully into his kingdom. Listen. Let me say it again. Let me say it again. That's important. If we hold fast to those things of which we are sure, God will be faithful to deliver us from every stronghold and lead us fully into his kingdom. Thank you, Lord. In the birth of Jesus, we see God coming in weak and vulnerable human form. God chooses to share our location and condition. God is with us. In the death of Jesus, we see God present in suffering human form. God chooses to take our part instead of being our enemy. God is for us. In the resurrection and ascension, we see God in victorious human form. In this form, insinuating himself into the depths of our very being. God is in us. As the Spirit of Christ, three views of Jesus, three views of God. Here then, in a cameo, is the glory of God. Here is what God is really like. He is the God who is with us, the God who is for us, and the God who is in us. In short, when God shows his face, he always shows his grace, the treasure that he offers to lodge with us is nothing other than the grace of God. For when we say grace, we mean precisely this, the promise of God with us, 
the power of God in us and the pardon of God 